Alessandro Bruno has been following developments in that region for years, a leading analyst of North African, Arab, and international affairs. He's also the editor of the North Africa Journal. Alessandro, good to see you again as always. What more do we know about the uh, circumstances of Saif's capture? Good afternoon. Well, the interesting thing for me is that he was captured in around the area, the village is around the area of a city called Sebha, which was one of the last Gaddafi uh, strongholds. Sebha was where his father, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, actually went to military academy. So some of the tribes there were friendly to him. But he was trying to get, I don't, I'm not even quite sure if he was actually really trying to get out to Niger, because in, in Niger he would have been arrested. Uh, and uh, probably uh, the authorities are trying to work with the new government, so they would have probably handed him over. I think his real goal was to be arrested by uh, international forces so as to go to, uh, to be tried in The Hague instead mm -hmm. of Tripoli. Yeah. So, in other words, he didn't want to take the chance of uh, facing the fate that his father faced after, yeah. you know. And in terms of his uh, treatment in captivity now, many people are saying that, uh, well, how he's treated uh, while he awaits his transfer to The Hague in Holland, the international court, is going to be an indication of, uh, of just how ready Syria is in this new regime is to deal with international human rights and justice. Well, that's part of the, 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 the his fear now. I, I think he would, rather, uh, he would rather go to The Hague. I think right now he's going to Tripoli, and he's going to be tried in, in Libya and probably face the death penalty. So uh, his real, you know, um, uh, the, it would have been much better for him to have gone to, to be arrested by international forces again. But to me, the, the irony of the whole thing is that Saiful Islam had the power within him last February to stop this entire mess. Uh, he was long slated as being the successor. And when, yeah, I was really shocked uh, at his turn because uh, uh, he was the, uh, the person in the regime who was the most um, uh, outward, uh, you know, he had the most relations with the outside world and promoted actual change many times. In fact, some, at one point he had to actually leave Libya because he, the newspapers that he ran were considered too liberal and uh, advocated too many reforms. And he actually drew the uh, attention, the negative attention, of the then security forces. So he was seen as more of a, an outsider uh, uh, from, from the security force point of view and the, the real successor. Had Gaddafi's uh, father handed over power in February, he could have stopped this ent the entire uh, civil war that followed and kept the palace and the, uh, mm -hmm. and the wealth and not ended up as he did. And the question, of course, will always remain because we'll never know. Yeah. Now, in terms of the region, Canada's defense, uh, Minister Peter McKay today uh, telling uh, delegates of the International Security Forum that the international uh, mission that helped overthrow Muammar Gaddafi mm -hmm. is not to be considered as a, a blueprint or a model for other interventions in that region, uh, countries like Syria yeah, or that's Iran. The, that's the message. Uh, do you agree? <laughs> yes, but that's the clear message because there's pressure on the international community to do something about Syria. There's not going to be any regime change in Syria through sanctions. No Arab regime has ever fallen through sanctions. Uh, and uh, the only military, external military force will do it. Uh, but the circumstances in Syria are completely different than Libya. If you, uh, Syria would involve Iran, Lebanon, eventually Israel. It would be a, a real mess. Much, Libya was at least... Uh, self-contained. So, uh, get to this uh, final question with a deadline set by the Arab League uh, for area, uh, Syria rather to end its crackdown. Yeah. What effect, if any, is this capture of uh, Saif al-Islam uh, likely to have in Syria? Uh, in Syria, I think that the, the impact was, the, the, the impact of uh, Gaddafi's death was psychologically was far greater and more important. This is not going to affect uh, Syria too much. Syria is, is uh, issue and a very from a strategic point of view, much more important than Libya. Libya's importance is, was oil. Uh, Syria's importance is uh, security and geostrategic and ultimately oil in, from the whole region. So it's a much different uh, and much uh, more dangerous situation. Alessandro Bruno, editor of North Africa Journal. I appreciate you coming in to talk to us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Word of his arrest spread quickly through Libya, and celebrations erupted on the streets of Tripoli. Now we are, we are free. All cheering the capture of Saif al Islam Gaddafi, son of the late Muammar Gaddafi. Have you heard that Saif is being caught? Once considered the heir apparent, the 39 year old went underground after his father was killed less than a month ago. 
but Libyan forces tracked him down in the country's southern desert along with his small crew of loyalists. Uh, very close to the Niger border. Uh, I think he was possibly on route trying to escape. Saif Gaddafi is accused of crimes against humanity for his brutal crackdown against rebels who ousted his family from power. But where he'll stand trial is now the big question. The International Criminal Court wants him tried in The Hague. I'm going to Libya to discuss the issue, how we manage this issue. The, the news is Saif will face justice. Where and how, that will discuss it. But Libyan officials want justice at home and promise a fair trial. He will get his uh, uh, day in court uh, and it will be a just uh, proper... A trial on Libyan soil would show how the justice system works under its new government. He's going to be tried in, in Libya and probably face the death penalty. Canada's Lieutenant General Charles Bouchard led NATO's Libya mission and warns the new government's credibility hinges on the process. It's imperative, in my opinion, for Libya to show their ability to exercise uh, legitimacy through the proper conduct of law. In a statement, Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird called his capture a, quote, welcome step in the development of a new Libya, bringing closure to a brutal regime that long ruled on violence and fear. Sandy. Thank you, Richard. CTV's Richard Madden in Ottawa tonight.